Hey, this is Ronnie Size, and welcome to my studio here at Metropolis. Yeah, you know we do it for the masses every day. There's so many passes, gotta throw them all away. Pocket full of respect, so much trouble, they light up all on the devil. I can see it in every single one of play. Got the feeling of a gift, just the time you can't resist. Who can guide you through the mist? We say plans, great plans, conquer and take lands. We make fans, never well, escape. You know about we do it for Ronnie the Size. Um, I've always been into classic hip hop and classic funk and soul. And I love the art of sampling. I love to sample records. No matter what, I used to go to New York back in the day and I used to always go through the, through the crates uh, in, the, in the most obscure record shops and to try to find that ultimate sample. And in drum and bass and jungle, that seemed to have got lost a little bit somewhere in the mix. So when putting together this record, I went back and looked at what really, for me, what made new forms stand out so much. And it was the, the art of sampling. You know, I had a S760 sampler and I used it to death, uh, nonstop. I sampled it until there was no more sample time left. So coming to this third album, it's called Do It For The Masses. The title is a bit misleading. It's not trying to incorporate the masses as in, you know, the, 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 the X Factor lot and the corporates and, you know, we're not trying to, to sell out Wembley Stadium. This is for the other masses, those who prefer to, to listen to something which is quite genuine and something which is quite, for me, something that is from the heart. I make music from the heart. And this record, it, for me, is do it for the masses, is for the masses. It has a, a great sample. And uh, the sample I used, I'm not gonna say where it's from until it's cleared. Uh, we're going through the process of clearing the shit right now, so I'm not gonna say where it's from. But I've always loved the sample. It's been used a few times, but I've always wanted to use it in a German bass, uh, you know, territory. And for me, this is where this, this sample lives well, and I think we've done it justice, and I'm looking forward to taking you through uh, the way that I've used it. As you can see, I'm using Pro Tools. Pro Tools is, a, is a, 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 a machine that I've been using since it came out, Pro Tools 1, and it's something that I'm comfortable with. It's, to me, it's like a big sampler, and I've managed to use it in a way where it really contradicts everything that I think about MIDI. I, I, I'm an audio freak. So using samples for me is something which I do, you know, not as often as I want to because of the, the clearance. But with this track here, I started off with this classic loop. Uh, let me just give you a blast of it. Let me play it to you, let you hear how, how it all starts. So that is basically using the elements of the sample. Uh, obviously you can hear dynamite, he starts to make a uh, entrance into the track as well, but it's not just the sample going on there. There's uh, the elements. So let me break it down to you. First of all, you'll have, you'll have the sample. Some effects. Got some effects in there to help it. You know, cause I'm a sound system boy. Just to bring, bring it to life. Yeah, 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 yeah. A little bit of dynamite in there. Okay, you got some, uh, just some, just extra vocals, just to help it stand out, and then to give it some real extra energy. Um, For me, I love my orchestration. I love to use orchestras and it just adds that extra element of d dramatic, you know, being in the movies. You know, for me, that's, I'm all about that. So once you put all that together, you do come up with 
the initial first intro. And one of the things you'll notice, the way that I'll, I'll explain the way that I work. I do everything the old school way because we have a limited amount of tracks. So this is just the intro. Yeah, 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 yeah. One thing I've got to mention as well, like we have a little bit of Onnelly. Onnelly is the vocalist from Represent, great vocalist, lover on stage. And we wanted to do something which was a little bit old school, a little bit nostalgic, to, so to speak. So we've got this vocal in there. You know. let, let, let the rhythm hit him. You know, we, we know that shit. It's like a sample. It's like, if I heard that on the record, I would sample it. That's the kind of vibe that we wanted to do. So basic hi-hats, just gives it the elements, more than one, nice tambourine, keeps it rolling, rides, gives it that nice crisp high end. We like that. Bit of open hi-hat, why not? Some snare claps in there. Modern day sounds, people like that. It's not, it's not too harsh on the ears. There we go, just lay them up. Nice back kick, always have a good back kick. A lot of people like to shelve out all the bottom end of kicks. That's not me, I'm hip hop. I want the kick to be fatter than the bass if I can make it as fat as the bass. A lot of people like to make these short, tight kicks and make them put, get, you know, because they sound good on radio. You know, it's got to sound good in the club for me. I want it to be, I'm hip hop all day. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's where I'm from. Do you know what I mean? Let's just solo that kick by itself. Come on. It, it's all there. Do you know what I mean? I've not taken anything out of it. There's a, it's a little bit going on here and there. Do you know what I mean? I'm not sure. I've got some plugins going on here. Look. I've got my nice peak. I love these EQs. Fab filter EQs are fantastic. You've got the analyzer. You know, you can see some of this stuff down there. Leaves the space for the bass. What else have we got here? I've pitched it up, so it's kicking out of 100 hertz. So, slight compression. I've gated it, because it was really long. So you're not really hearing that much difference. I think so, 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 subtlety with anything, right, is the key to, to mixing and mastering. Yeah, and then you're not gonna see this working yet because I've not got my pre's on, but this is my secret weapon, which I don't really want too many people to know about. So everyone's got to have something which they like to keep to their self. And we've got some toms in there. With the brakes, I like to keep the brakes Sh shuffling and rolling. I take out the kicks. I take out all the snares. Cause they just clash, they clash. It's like a lot of people, they do a lot of um, side chain compression. Why bother? Just take them out. Do you know what I mean? A couple of breaks there. Right. There you go, two breaks in there. Just take, just take out the stuff that you don't need. Let the other stuff breathe. That's the way I do it. It's quite simple, it's quite straightforward. And then we've got, here. And then we got old school Roddy break. Sitting right there on top. Sub bass. This one there is really pushed. You wouldn't hear the tone. You wouldn't hear the tone in, in drum and bass, bass lines. You wouldn't hear the. It's reggae. Do you know what I mean? It sounds like any digital reggae record from back in the day. That's, that's the way I look at it. They come from different sources. I like to use um, my Native Instruments reactor. I like to use my Expandy, uh, which is a Pro Tools standalone plugin, which is great. Uh, I like to use basses from, from different sources because they all just move a little bit different. One of the tricks that I really, really like to do, if we actually get rid of this here, and then we can see, get rid of all this stuff here. So. Quite a lot of resonance in that place. Yeah. Well, I've, I've rolled off. I've done a 60 video roll off. Do you know what I mean? Some people would not, wouldn't even bother. They would just keep it in. But because I think mastering can get a, a tighter mix, I do a 60 video roll off. That's what I like to do. 
then my secret weapon again, which I'm not going to show you how it's used. Um, and then I have 180, which is radio. You can hear that clear on the radio. I always put two on, and I have another one at 40. And if I mess around with them a little bit, I'm not going to hear that much difference. So I mean, but they're off, they're both flying. I like to have them 180. I could take it down and make it sound. I could tame it if I want to. That's tame, that's tame now. You know what I mean? So that's quite tamed. It's quite nice. It's preference. But for me, in this, I wanted, I want to hear the notes. So I love my R basses. I always use two, one at 40, one, 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 one at 40 and one at 80. They just, it just works for me. Every, every producer will say this, it's horses for courses. Everyone will say, oh yeah, but I'll do it like this, and I'll do it like that, and, I'll, and that's cool. You do what you gotta do, I'll do it my way. Let's go to part two of the track. Yeah, let the rhythm hit him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you know we do it for the masses every day. Cause so many passes gotta go that all the way. Rocket full of response on my triple that I know pull on the devil. I can see it in every single water play. Got the feeling I've been getting just the time you got the test. Who can get you through the mist? We say plants, great plants, conquer So let's just stop it there. So in the first verse, where, well, the intro, what we're talking about is those people who they go to uh, all the festivals, they queue up, do you know what I mean? And when they leave the festival, you see them, they still got their wristbands on. They'll keep their wristbands on for every festival that they go to. They've got like 16 wristbands. I'm like, why have you got so many wristbands on? And they go, oh yeah, but we just loved every festival. And these are the kind of people we're talking about. They've got all their, so many wristbands, it's, is ridiculous. So that's the, 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 the part that we're really trying to, to talk about. As well as Dynamite, for me, is a vocalist who is on stage every weekend and he performs in front of these people every weekend. So we wanted to give something back to those people who are there every single weekend. The, the MCs and the DJs who have to go up on stage every single weekend and perform in front of the masses. Let's just go back quickly to that verse. Yeah, you know we do it for the masses every day. There's so many passes, gotta go there all the way. Got simps. So we, simps uh, come from Omnisphere. I love Omnisphere, Atmosphere is a great synth. It's played by one of the keyboard players in my band called uh, Jay Wilcox from P. Bernard. Quite subtle, but it's in there, very effective, really works. Got the strings. So, some exclusive break that was given to me by um, a, a friend of mine. Uh, fantastic break, I just love the vibe of it. It just works. You can hear my layers, pretty straightforward. Just throw the break in there. Throw the bass in. Oh, there we go again. Break down and back again. And then the vocal. Rocket full of response on my trouble, they line up all on the devil. I can see it in their face, they wanna play. Got the feeling of a gift, just the time you can't resist. Who can guide you through the mist? It lands, we make fast, never escape fast. We do it for the m Yeah, you know we do it for the masses every day. Got so many passes, gotta throw them all away. Rocket full of response on my trouble, they line up all on the devil. I can see it. So you hear the bare bones, you get the bare bones. Hear the strings, all the elements, they're all there. So I'm breaking it down. So we go back to this part here. This part here is... You can hear the stabs. So we go. So 
Still using the loop. Got crashes. As I, as I scroll down, you'll see. What else have I I've got? Got my string in there. It's all, it's all subtle. It doesn't have to be over subtle. Effects in there. Guitars. Let's get this up a bit. It's nice, it's musical. It's what I like to do. You know what I mean? I like to have those, those elements where someone would, wouldn't even hear it in the mix. But I do love, I do love this. It's a chorus and a doubler. That's, that's, that's what we're hearing. If I took that, so let's say, on the guitar, if I took that off, then take that off, the H delay, which best delay ever. There you go. So there's your flat signal. You do direct and you do uh, mic and amp. You t take your choice, do you know what I mean? And then you use whatever, which one you want to. But you can hear as I, I like to slam my compression down. Two to one, four to one. I like 20 to one, I don't, I don't give a damn, you know what I mean? It's, it's all in the ears. I like these two components here because they allow frequencies to be able to cross over. They cross over, so you get that one compressed at the bass end and that one there compressed a bit at the top end. So it's a, it's a little bit of, yeah, it's almost like multibanding. Exactly that, but it's very simple. These, these Pro Tools plugins are very, very cool. I really love them. Do you know what I mean? Haste delay. Love it. Do you know what I mean? Especially with the ping pong. Bit of ping pong. Nothing wrong with that. Space is great. But it still sounds muddy, right? So the EQ, let's get the EQ. You know? And that, I've EQ that in accordance to that end of that of the track. I'm doing everything in Pro Tools, all chopped up in Pro Tools at the moment. Everything, you know what I mean? A lot of this stuff hasn't gone through the 760. It, it, some of the, maybe some of the kicks and snares may have come from my archive. I use the 760, the, the Roland 760, for when I really want to get myself into the 1997 era. If I have a break and I want it to sound a certain way, then what I'll do, I'll take that break and I'll purposely put it in the 760, time stretch it down, and then I'll make it happen. And I'll just make sure that it sounds just how it did two decades ago. I'll be honest with you, I've been through a million and one different samplers. Um, I've tried so many different time stretches. I've tried so many different methods of trying to recreate that uh, that that high end the, the the way that the the, the time check brings a grainy kind of essence to the machine to the from the machine to the sample and I've ended up having to get myself this big old monitor and get my 760 back out and start resampling again because I've been around for a a long time and a lot of people get quite disillusioned with the fact that I like to move forward. They're like, Ronnie, but you don't sound like how you did back in 1997. And I'm like, because I want to move forward, I want to move forward. But, you know, you can't please everyone, can you? And then if you do, you, you'll never please everyone all the time. But I felt I'm going to do myself some justice, I do my fans some justice, and I will start making records again, how I used to make records back in 1997, or even back in 1994, which is something which, as a producer, it's like, you know, I want to move forward. And uh, with this track here, I tried, I tried to keep the elements of Ronnie Size still in my music. I, I really do try. Well, today, we are fortunate to have some great plugins, which now allow us to do stuff that we could never ever do back in the day. We can uh, use curves and we can use uh, different uh, 
you know, techniques of EQing and analyzing to help us to get to a point where back in the day, you, we, we just no way that we could do that. Okay, the sound was more analog and it sounded great. But nowadays it's a lot more clinical and people using uh, plugins, especially go-to plugins that they love, they seem to get a really good, tight, punchy sound. And that's the sound that I am looking forward to, to get into. As, as I'll go through to the next part of this track, if I go forward, so we've got the we've got the, the vocals of dynamite, which it makes represent. That's what makes represent. On the and dynamite, you know, we still got our, our our fat kicks and snares. We're using all the all the modern day plugins. We're using H delay. We're using all the compressors. You know, we're using all the fat filter EQs, which is great. And then we go into our typical drum and bass, pretty standard, rolling drum and bass. What, what we're known for nowadays in 2014. This is what the kids know. So, you know, but still, we like to keep it shuffling. Drum and bass has changed over the years from it being once called rave, to hardcore, to being called jungle, to being called tech step, drum step. You know, it's had so many different names and so many different formats. The modern day sound of drum and bass now is pretty much almost geared towards being played on the radio. Drum and bass is now, you know, number one in the charts. Uh, is a drum and bass beat with a vocalist on top. So the elements are all there. I always try to make sure I move with the times and by doing that, you always have to adapt. You know, I compromise it a little, and then I have my other side where I don't compromise. So I mean, I do what I want to do, but sometimes you do what you have to do. Um, being able to play on the main stages, in the main festivals, in front of 20,000 people is a goal of mine, which I, I've done before at Glastonbury, and I love to do that. So making music where people can sing along to, where people can learn the words and it's not so complicated is something which I want to be a part of. You know, I can make an everyday roller every day. You know, you give me a bass, you give me some breaks and I'm your man, I'm good to go. You know what I mean? But with this, we want to make something where the crowd can grab onto it at festivals, uh, and they can sing along and then they can enjoy it. I have a real belief that I don't ever go into the studio and make a record and say to myself, this is a hit. I never made that decision. I would never make that decision. Is I just make the record that I love and in this room it's mine. But as soon as it leaves this room, it no longer becomes mine. It then becomes uh, the fans, the press, the people who dance to it, the record buyer, the DJ and the people who are on Twitter, Facebook, and all social media, it becomes theirs. But at the moment, this record is mine, and I never decide whether it's an anthem. The crowd do, the people decide that. When I made Brown Paper Bag, I made six tunes all at the same time. And I put them onto a DAT tape, I gave them to my a &R man, Paul Martin, and that was the one he picked out. It, it didn't mean nothing to me. Hands up. I can't even remember making the record. I remember making the batch of records, but actually sitting down and making Brown Paper Bag itself from start to end, it wasn't like, oh, well, I'm going to take this bass, I'm going to take this sound. And it just never happened like that. I had a selection of sounds. I made six tunes. That was the one that caught fire. And, you know, for me, you have to have people around you who have got that magic here. You know, and it's great to have people with, mag with magic ears around you. So for me, at the moment, this is my single. I like the record. I love On Elite and I love Dynamite and I love Represent. And this is why I'm, I'm making this record. And, you know, I want it to sound modern. And I, I play it in my DJ set and I get a good response. And that's as far as it is right now. That's, as, that's where we are right now. You know what I mean? We may put it out next week and everyone might just say, you know what, Ron, it's a pile of crap. 
we don't like it, we're going to put it in the bin. But you know what? I like it. And that's the first most important thing for me to enjoy my music. And I put it in the car and I listen to it in the car and I drive and I listen to it and I rewind it and I like it and I'm very proud of what I do and until I make the next record. One of the things I want to show you, what the way that back in the day when people used to record and they had tape, one of the things that they could had to do, they had to mix the verse, mix that separately, then mix the chorus separately, and then mix the middle eight separately, then the breakdowns and then the ends. They did it all separately. They had all these, and then they would piece it all together. Now, this is the theory that I've gone back to. So the, the intro is just this section here. Everything in the intro is this section. Then the next part is this section here. It's just all this here. And then the next, the, even the, this, this small breakdown here, it's got its own section. And then I'll go to the next piece of section. Now this is the beauty of having like stupid amount of tracks in Pro Tools to be able to do this. And then I've got this section here. Look, this is, this is just one whole section which I'm just using. It's just got, I've done it all in sections. Like even the, the, the I've got a ragged section which I've done here. Oh, this is the, the middle eight. It's, it's his own section. It's all gone into his own section. So you, so you get the gist of what I'm saying. I've given it his own section. Now, one of the reasons why I can do this is because I am in Pro Tools HDX and I have maximum cards. Now, my cards, this I've got something like 373 tracks, probably more. T uh, time slots, 185. Um, I'm not even on my second card. My CPU, right, is not even budging. Is <laughs> it's not even. It's not even budging. And I'm I'm almost like 500 tracks deep. Now this is why I'm on Pro Tools. So now if I want to come and get a 40 piece orchestra in and have individual tracks, I might get onto my second card. And this is, this is how I like to work. So what happens is normally, so you have all your stuff all on one track. You move one thing, the whole track is moved. And you go and there's automation and you're doing this and you're doing that and there's lot and you're like, but it sounded like that an hour ago, but it doesn't sound like that now. And you like, you start kicking yourself. So you start going back four extra mixes and you know, it, you start clip gaining stuff and you start, and it's just long. Whereas in this mode, I'm just going, you're right. You hear about, you understand where I'm coming from. It's got its own section. Got his own vibe. In this section here, I've got something which I really, really love from Omnisphere. All this kind of stuff. I really love. You know, so, you, so you've got the best of both ways. So you have to mix these, these parts differently. Otherwise, it's just not going to gel with the vocal. Even the vocal is mixed differently. So one of the things I cannot live without is my eventide. And there's a setting on here where it allows you to be able to take the pitch of the vocal and I do a minus 12 and a plus 12. It's something that myself and my engineer have been doing for years. His name's D Product. Um, he's a, a key part of what I do as well. We learned a lot together and that gives it, rather than me having so many to layer up, Lots of different vocals. Throw them all away. Bucket full of respect, so much trouble. They line up all on the double. I can see it in their face. They want to play. So let me just put that on a little bit of a cycle, and I can show you. Yeah, you know we do it for the masses every day. Got so many passes, got to throw them all away. Bucket full of respect, so much trouble. They line up all on the double. I can see it in their face. They want to play. So. Yeah, you know we do it for the masses every day. So we've got, got so many passes, got to throw them. I don't use much reverb 
on vocals. It's, it, for me, it clouds it. If you're making a ballad, great. Let's get Pavarotti's, let's put, you know, down. Let's get, get involved, let's get reverbs all day. I don't use a lot of delays on my vocals. I just use very, very simple uh, standalone plug-in, uh, Pro Tools plugins. Um, I use my UADs, which I love. I think they're very, you know, pretty much top of the range. You know, Waves and the UAD plugins are fantastic. And I found another little plugin which I really, really love on vocals, which I've been using on Only more than on Dynamite. So if I've, it's this plugin here is a is a vocal enhancer uh, from Novotech. And it's just something that I just stumbled across, and it is so great on uh, on Lee's vocal. It's just it's, it's very simple and it's very easy. The less buttons, the better. Uh, I'm not really trying to get too much into notching in, notching out, notching in. You've got a lot of uh, you know programs that will do that stuff for you. Doing it, doing it, doing it. This here. Doing it, doing it, doing it. I'm not sure if you're... Doing it, doing it, doing it. Doing it, doing it, doing it. It's just... Doing it, doing it, doing it. Before. Doing it, doing it, doing it. After. Doing it, doing it, doing it. It's very subtle. Doing it, doing it, doing it. But it allows me to find the, the sweet spot in a vocal. And I love that. You know, it's one of those machines. I don't know... Who knows about this one? But it's a sweet spot. For me, it's, it's great. It manages to take out the stuff that you don't need and enhance the stuff that you do need. And sometimes you could be sat there all day, you know, with some EQ, uh, with a fab filter, you know, love fab filter, nothing against fab filter, all day, going like that, going on, up and down, notching stuff in, notching, until you've got like about a million and one of these. And that's just, I'm just not about that. Do you know what I mean? Whatever that is about is is cool. Do you know what I mean? But I'll I'll do that if it's like something that's really in my ears. But remember where I come from. I come from S760 samplers, Atari 1040 ST. You know, I'm not saying that I have the best mixdowns in the world, and I'm not saying that what I do is the best production in the world. I'm just saying, I'm just used to the way that I work, and the way that I work works for me.